Okay. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? My name is Richard Terrell. You are watching Do Live, a daily stream show in which we talk about design. It's Sunday, and we are doing the stream a little early in the day, like we do on the weekends. And I'm going to continue a conversation we started a few streams ago when we were talking about enemy design. Uh, so you can find Do on Twitter, YouTube, on Discord. The link to our Discord is on Twitter. It's all at design oriented. That's really all you need to know. So we're going to talk a little bit today about tracking, uh, tracking and lunging, and just kind of pieces of enemy design that glue the rest of their elements together. Uh, so we talked a be bit before about how enemies move and how their AI works and how they react based on uh, different distances and whatnot, but now we're actually going to talk about how games use this feature called tracking and or lunging, you know, kind of fudging the distance between objects and spaces to make everything else work or not work, right? It's always a degree to which something like this can break a game. So we're going to consider what that level is and look at a few examples. I really wish I could show you guys uh, Horizon Zero Dawn uh, or some other games, but I don't have my PS4 and we're just going to have to make do with what we have. So back to Hollow Knight. Um, it's kind of really easy to showcase this stuff on a 2D game, so it's kind of neat starting with Hollow Knight. Uh, da -da -da -da. But it's it's just a general problem that you'll have with any spatial game, 2D, 3D. Uh, let's just ignore 1 and 4D because who cares? A lot of times. Oh yeah, I really wish I could showcase some Salmon Run, but I guess I'll show you a few pictures. Uh, a few videos of what I mean. Okay, so like this is Hollow Knight. I don't even remember where I am. I'm over here. I just got a new sword attack apparently. It lets you dash into a slash and this dash slash is like... So this is normal, dash slash. Dash sl da Why'd you jump on there? Dash slash, dash slash. You kind of have to do it after you're done dashing, but if you hold it, charge, and release, it's, it's much bigger and it flashes. And it's probably much more powerful. So that's just kind of how that goes. We're gonna leave. Did I hit it? No. These guys are annoying. Get away. Yeah, so in general, we talked a lot about before about how knockback is really important for spatial based games and a hit stun. And these enemies right here don't have it. So, like, it's, one way to make a simple enemy even more simple is to take away the things that would otherwise have made it dynamic. Um, if your combat is spatial based and you don't have things like knockback or hit stun, you have to be really careful about how the interplay and the risk reward are balanced. Uh, you know, Adrian, you were talking before about how Jonathan Blow was playing, um, whatever that game is called, Moonlighters? No, that, that, that wasn't me, that was just Kai. Oh, he was talking about, oh yeah, Moonlighters, and how if that game doesn't have hits done or knockback for the enemies, you know, like, you're trading hits a lot and it's a little awkward. Oh, well, he did some weird movement right there. Uh, so like, yeah, it's really important in order to even establish the basic risk reward of your game to be like, okay, what are you risking? You're risking the, you know, first strike. Is it all about the first strike? So you're like jockeying for space and whoever gets hit first loses their advantage and the other person gets a small advantage. But if you, if you don't have hit stun or knockback like that, he's like, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, they're going to hit you anyway. They're going to keep doing their attack, much like the enemies do in this game. Uh, let me see if I'm going in the right direction. By the way, I dropped a link to a GIF that shows probably some of the worst tracking I've ever seen. Okay, so we'll look at that. Oh my gosh. So I hit the enemy forward and then dashed into it because I couldn't see. This game does a weird thing where you hit an enemy, the smoke effects and the flash cover up the enemy. You're like, don't do that, indies. For crying out loud, don't do that to anybody, but especially indies. Like, you gotta be able to see what's happening. You gotta be able, you wanna see the opponent get knocked back. This, the puff of smoke, yeah, we get it, it's a puff of smoke. You'll see it even if it's in the background. But the important thing is where the enemy's position is. Let's see if we can do this dash slash. That's fine. But hey, 
So those are examples of a few normal style enemies. We gotta go to the dueling style enemies and I gotta find them here. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna take a look at that. Yeah, there's a normal style enemy. I gotta find out where I wanna go. Is it up? Is it here? Is it here? Souvenir, souvenir. Oh, almost ran into these guys. I'm not sure what those bees mean. Does that mean there's like a secret passageway here or something? I know there's some kind of secret passageway that you can get to the bees, but I think it's just directly below me. Directly Jonathan below me. It's a random joke. Oh, I should have just paid attention. So you can't get here unless you have this ability to go through this bubbly water. Uh, you might be able to... No, you can't. And if you have the jet ability, obviously it's not good enough. So, like, finally now I have the bubbly water ability. I'm going over here. And the cool having the bees outside of the zone just to be like, there's something bee-like here. That's cool, too. Uh, we'll talk about Hollow Knight's level design later. But, hey, I'm finally in the bee zone. I've never been here before. What the? I definitely tried to do this. <laughs> just more fun. I don't think there's going to be any enemies in here that um, that are going to be good to study, so for this lunging, this is upsetting. Oh really? There's nothing else here? It was just that. Maybe there's a secret wall, but whatever. So I think... I think the impulse is for a lot of designers to be like these enemies you can you can dance around them too easily so we got to make it to where they become deadly and if you are constantly moving back the enemies are constantly trailing you they're not very uh deadly so what do we do once the enemy's ready to attack you're like how about we just do a thing where like if you're x distance away close in that gap and then throw an attack at the enemy and that's essentially what we mean by lunging it's a, an extra boost of speed that oftentimes is just determined by your distance to it and not just some extra like general speed increase that they apply and that's really it's really confusing it's really sort of um does royal waterways have a station uh look how lost i am in this place so if i go there there this is probably i gotta go down yeah so like okay you're you're basing everything on static conditions right like your opponents only hit so hard and they're not going to just randomly do more damage for the most part not in action games you know we don't have crits um that means you can count the number of hits that you expect to take you can count the number of a lot of stuff and um I just keep collecting money i have plenty of money what am i doing so then you start to do your risk reward of the battlefield based on all those factors like okay i gotta be this far away stay safe i gotta wait for these opportunities to get close uh so on and so forth and that's kind of how you you play your action game the trick of the action game is that everything plays out in real time and because everything shares the same space for the most part um your even the strategies that you have that work really well for one individual encounter of an enemy may all oh i found the i found the beehive um, this is the accidental uh, secret warp, and I was just attacking those bees. The guy in the um, video did the same thing and discovered that one on accident, which is kind of cool. I'm destroying your hive. Oh, let's see what this enemy does. Let's see if he oh, poops out jerks. And he runs away. New enemy, new attack. shouldn't be here. Will there be any any lunging enemies over here? No? No, we'll leave and come back. So if the enemy does something relative to you, you know, and it changes its stats just relative to your distance, you know, that's that's already sort of stressing a whole different set of skills, right? Stressing your adapt adaptation in different ways, the complexity of the situation is a little higher. Um, this is just beyond, ouch! 
enemies that aim at you. Like, we all get, like, enemies that aim at you. Like, oh, he's pointing in my direction, it's pointing in my direction, whatever. And you move out of the way, uh, hopefully before the thing gets to you. But I feel like if too much of the stats are just dependent on the... are designed to basically close the gap and minimize the difference between you, especially, and your targets, then it's it's actually trying to minimize the bonuses that you were gaining from that spatial relationship in the first place. I mean, that's precisely how uh, we defined it. Like, oh, if the opponent is moving back too much, then nullify the thing that's allowing them to move back uh, freely. But then, like, they earned that by moving back. Like, that was something that was part of the sort of the spatial dance, the relationship between you and your opponent. And if you just collapse it instantly, well, you basically took away all that meaning that was there beforehand to get in that position. Not all, like nearly all of it, right? Um, go down and right and I can freaking teleport out of here. Sounds good to me. Hey, how much money do you want? I think I think this creature wants three thousand in order for me to get like a mask piece. But I have all this money, but it doesn't matter. Ooh. Thank you. That'd have been kinda cool if that were placed in a more central location and you were just encouraged to give to it every now and then. Uh, and then you're like, I don't know why I'm giving this money all this time, and then all of a sudden you get to three thousand and they reward you, but you know. It's not. <laughs> Good job, right? I need a double jump to access this area. So yeah, we can talk about like the dynamics of having limits and clamps all the time when we're talking about gameplay, right? Like, oh, it's not inherently a bad thing to try to minimize uh, a value, minimize a difference, um, allow the player to play within a certain range of interactivity, and then basically nullify it. Uh, afterwards, like there's nothing wrong with that inherent idea, but again, where's my Coliseum? I think I have to go here. No, I have to go to King Station and go up to the right. Where are some enemies I can fight? <laughs> Tacos in Totoro. Yeah, but. It's all, it's all got to be considered in a balance of like how much am I giving up, like what did the player earn, what is the point of closing in the gap, is there another way that the player can be pressured, uh, and try to do it without as many of these sort of gap fudgers as possible would make the whole experience less complex, which makes it more clear, which also uh, generally establishes like the risk reward of everything and lets the action play out in the space in front of you instead of just like all these background values influencing everything. This enemy, you know, he just has a speed increase, so he just does a standard increase speed. This guy likes to throw punches, and you see like, like that tiny little step forward? Like, that's nothing. That's not even a lunge. He does the same amount, no matter if I'm close to him or far away. Like, check this out. Oh, ouch. I gotta get close, and he's just the same amount. That's consistent. Now let's look at some other jerk. Man, this person jumps to my position? Is that is that true? Let's see. Or just does the same hop every time, and usually does it when you're about range to get hit, right? No? Yes. This guy flies around and tries to align himself to your position, and then flies at you and attacks, closing the gap. He homes in on you with his pikes, and does that. I hate coming back to these same areas all the time. Hey. This, this one's also a little confusing. And I feel like a lot of lunging is... Oh, wow. A lot of lunging. So look how big this guy's range is. That's huge. He, he leans forward and swipes forward. Oh wow, you stopped randomly right there, huh? This guy is more reasonable. 
he backs up when he does his swipe. It looks like his attack range is exactly how long his sword is, right? And then when he charges at you, he kind of tucks his sword neatly at his side, which is pretty cool. And he attacks you, so his hitboxes are really conservative. Like, what you see is what you get, and I like that. You know, his body's a whole box. Like, you know, you're playing around the distance. Like, cool. Like, you stand really reasonably close, and when he charges at you, his hitbox doesn't extend so fast that he actually gets an extra, like, reach on you. It's just exactly where his body is and exactly how long it looks like his sword should be. Makes sense. This is a nice enemy. He has some variation on how far he charges. Like, let's say he charges and I go above his head. I think it stops him instantly. Don't reach the wall, please. Come on, do the right, do the right random thing. Pay for the man's car. There we go. So he goes that distance, no matter what. Is it always that distance? Seems like it. So he's pretty static. He's dead. And you want the you want the the player to be able to like a lot of people would think like well that made that enemy really easy and you were just playing with them like yeah that's that means it's skill based right <laughs> think about it in the in the, a little bit different way if if no matter how skilled you are as a player uh, compared to like uh, an intermediate player and a beginning player and a fresh player like a novice if they all look the same that means they're all doing the same approach. And if they're all doing the same approach, that means no matter how much skill you have or want to exert, it's all going to sort of end up being the same thing, like the same sort of uh, strategy, right? Same position and timing. Uh, so then if it's, if it's all the same position and timing for a highly skilled player and a new player and an intermediate, that means it's actually not letting the skills of those players show up in different strategies, manifest itself in different sort of uh, positional styles, timing challenges, anything. It's all the same. If it's all the same, that means it doesn't have that much of a skill, um, a range, right? A spectrum for the player to express themselves. And then you're like, well, that means it's just less skill. <laughs> it just means it's probably one linear, simple way to do it, and that's just how it is. So if you can see someone dance around an enemy Play within pixels of getting hit, counterattacking in the smallest windows, and 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 the the capacity for a player to do that, that is what you want. So I think a lot of developers sometimes, because they make their own games and they design their own enemies, they quickly achieve a high level of knowledge, which translates largely into the skill that they have. They might discover like a simple strategy or a simple like algorithm or a set of heuristics to beat them They're like this enemy's too easy You're like no if you design by principle the enemy just needs to do one thing clearly and effectively and then you can build off of that but if you make the enemy take too much of your attention you make it too hard to beat 1v1 then you really are sort of constricting your skill range and you want people to be able to style on enemies you want not only them to be able to express the different levels of skill through their play but you want even doing that to be different like what moves they use, what attacks they use, how they use it, when they attack. In this game, you only really have this basic attack and it's used for most everything. Uh, you have these specials right here, but they're just different hits, right? It's, it's more than nothing, right? I like using and finding different opportunities to use them. And then this uh, new death slash I'm gonna use, right? I'll see if I can use that. But essentially, essentially, there's many el uh, aspects of your design that you have to understand and, and balance well in order to bring out like the best oops and people like that. <laughs> you guys slash. So it looks like the slash is pretty cool because it recovers really quickly, unlike um, unlike the uh, side special. This thing doesn't recover quickly after you slash it, but the dash and slash does. Oh, wow. Wow, I missed. Oh. Wow. I 
I think the mantis style enemies are the ones that lunge the most. I'll see if I can survive long enough to get to them. Diagonals. Diagonal projectiles, so annoying. So one thing I always say, like, um, combat, a lot of people think it's about doing crazy combos and having all these flashy moves and stuff, and the entire Bayonetta Devil May Cry uh, style design where you have all these super fancy moves and flashy combos, I think that's sort of uh, in response to this idea of, oh, when, when masterful players play, they look like they're completely styling on people, but essentially you get that level of competency looking gameplay for free. <laughs> And you don't necessarily work work for it or earn it, right? Um, oh, come on, that happens so much. I don't know what's weird about the walls and they don't um, s stick to me very well, but whatever. So like, oh, you touch a button with Dante, you touch a button in Marvel's Capcom 3, you look like a freaking comboing genius, right? But you're actually just mashing, you can just mash the controller against your face and get a lot of the same results. Like, and it's not saying there's not skill to it, but you get a lot of the basic coolness for free. And a lot of people like that because they don't have a lot of skill to make themselves look cool in other games. But for me, I like it to where your base level of control and, and attacks, like I, I, I put it this way once, like I like it to where my attacks don't look cool, they just are very functional. I'll do the job of making myself look cool. I'll find the timings, the spacings, and the opportunities to really make my playstyle and my unique skill set differentiate and shine, right? Oh, that was a pretty sweet split. That was a pretty sweet split. Finally used to their movement pattern. Um, so yeah, like, if I touch a button and my character's like, look how cool I am, like, oh, that's, that's you. But I want to I wanna do my own thing, right? Like, I'm, I'm playing the game. Not, okay, stop. Not the character. I don't even know what augments I have here. Probably not the best ones. That's why I really like Zelda, and I really think just walking forward calmly and moving around the space very accurately is like really an important part to what makes the combat in Zelda really good, and it's incredibly understated, right? Uh, being able to place your character where you need to, being able to place your sword, and that simple animation is a lot easier to control and understand and, and work with than basically big slashes like this. Like, see Hollow Knight Slash? It's like curved and it hits a little bit above his head. It, the slashes are probably the same exact uh, hitbox, even though they look a little different. And sometimes there's a little bit more ambiguity there than than it's necessary. So even something as basic as a, a repeated simple slash could be have some so questions and holes and whatever, and it could be one element of feedback that could be a lot clearer to result in a lot more skill or a lot more competency and confidence. Man, why did you why did you hit me so hard? Hey, I don't like you. So we're about to get to the man's so better not die then. This is a mantis, look at these lunge attacks. You stop. So the mantis has like a triangle thing approach, but then that, that lunge he does across like the entire stage. Stop it. And this this homing attack here is incredible. I can't believe how annoying these sides are. Get out of here. So just like the other enemies, they lunge at a very specific amount. Oh, no. no. Quit backing up. Quit attacking me. Oh, wow. That's incredibly accurate. Like, why would they do that? Oh, come on. <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. Oh, no. Not again. What? How big was that range? So, like, this guy has a tinier sword than the other guy had a, um had a, a javelin and its range was bigger like that doesn't make any sense you you want to see something and be like i know how long your range is going to be you see the weapon in its hand you're like i know you can only go this far and then they just like cheat so much in this game but again you want your you want you to build your action games out of simple movement because the core of action whether it's like a shooting game or a fighting game or a brawler or whatever like the very core of action that we know it across all these video games is actually uh, positioning right putting yourself in the right position at the right time 
Uh, you could say that. Oh, I'm in the I'm in the back. What's going on over there? Somebody's fighting. That's interesting. What is this? Probably some Easter egg or secret I could unlock or something. I don't have my sound in. Maybe I'll put it in. Yeah, so the core is positioning, and you can look at a game like Time Splitters, and you're like, oh, well, it's a light gun game. You don't get to position yourself at all. It's true. Uh, it's a very, very sort of a uh, simple style action game, and you can say that, you know, rhythm action games, those are action games. Like, yeah, but they only do time, right? And they use music to make that really interesting. So they're not like, that's an action that only takes advantage of time, and uh, you can say that the like on games don't let you position so it's just it's it's a similar level of simplicity but once you get a character moving around in space like the primary thing that you do is move them into position regardless of what kind of attack you're gonna have um mega man that's why it's like jump and shoot man right let me go to this one because it's not just that mega man has a gun but that those pellets are so small that in order to hit enemies that are in the air or jumping or moving or whatever you have to jump to the right height and shoot the pellets uh, lemons, if you will. That's incredibly important for Mega Man. Metroid, same way. It's not just like Samus has a gun and you can point it diagonally and do all the stuff. It's that you can point it in the right direction. <laughs> and and oh, here's this jerk. Look how big that slash is. What is what is up with this guy? That's huge. What what is in your hand? How long is your arm? <laughs> That's so big. I can't believe how many hits this guy takes still, and I have upgraded weapons. Hey, thanks. That was a side special. Why? Playing on an analog stick, nothing comes out consistently. I don't want to play on the D-pad. I thought those guys took two hits. So yeah, moving your character continuously through analog space and like having fine-tuned control, like look, look, look what I can do here. That's pretty accurate. Like this is good. Look, the, the accurate of those incoming needle nose is pretty, pretty accurate it seems. I can just do this and dodge it and like barely get around him. This is what you want in your game. And like now all of a sudden I'm styling more on this dude. Oops, except for right there. I'm gonna do some perfect pivots. And get hit in the face. And you want to be able to do stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And just slightly slip off platforms and then juke things. And you want the attacks to be slow enough. Like this is a pretty decent speed attack. Most of the attacks in this game and the, the way the enemies move are not this slow. And I like those guys for that reason. Those guys also have good interplay because you can reflect them just with one strike. No matter how weak. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. And then right here, the more enemies sort of track and home in your position, that's when the more fine tuning is important. So you're like, I just want that needle nose guy to be like right here. And then I kind of want to step to the side. Or I just want to slip. Man, that guy's so annoying. I can't believe that guy. I hate that enemy. Oh my, I can't believe he made that angle. Why? So if you make your your base movement too complex, which you know move, space spatial dynamics are already like rich enough. You don't need to make that any more complex than just being able to put your character where you want when you want to. Um, if you make that too complex and you you rely on other kinds of movement to uh, be like the basic way uh, to interact with the game Then you're gonna be limiting yourself really early So if a game has a dodge roll like this game doesn't you don't do the dash that much you don't need to use the dash as well 
I guess in a lot of enemy encounters you have to dash away because their range is so crazy. But stuff like this where the enemies are like hopping around. Like you can even walk under them which is like the nice tuning, right? Just like Mario Bros. Fireballs, you want to be able to do stuff like this and accurately put your character away. And that's when you can find little holes like this and get the advantage because you're, you're basically solving an equation, right? Or solving a problem. I didn't know that these guys jump higher when you hit them straight up. What the crazy? Uh, you're saying like based on my positioning and timing and spacing, like where do I need to be basically to do that, right? Like take them all out. And the only reason I was able to get even that fancy finish is because I had control even in the air over all the my positioning. Oh wow. I'm hitting him with the backwards slash on purpose. So this is how much control I have, right? You want that in your game and the only way to get that Oh my gosh! See, you can just dash left and right or walk left and right. It's, this is well tuned because you can walk it left and right. I tell people all the time, like, quit underestimating the importance and the power of walking. You want to be able to walk around attacks if you anticipate it and know the timing well. You want to be able to dance and juke and totally sort of, um... You want to be able to dance and juke and totally sort of outplay your opponent with perfect spacing because that's what they do in all the martial arts films when they're like punching they're just like barely moving their head and dodging it the equivalent of that in video games is basically barely moving to dodge stuff like let's see if i can do it this guy lunges a lot see i, I don't like how he crashes in after he swings it's just crazy sauce See, that's cool, dashing through with the charge and hitting him from behind. That's cool. Let's see if I can do anything cool here. I want to try to down clash his sideways attack. There we go. I did. No, I didn't do it. I didn't do it again. Come on, do your attack for crying out loud. <laughs> Can I not clash that weapon? The range seems pretty... Oh, wow, so annoying. Mind your space. There, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to trade clash on all of his hits. Or kill him, you know, one or the other. Oh, I hate that. Whew, that was cool. Just finding that little space where both of them were going to hit me. Usually. So I feel like the more you have super fast attacks, the more you have super fast movement, the more you have, um, that's a huge range for crying out loud. The more you have all that stuff, the harder it is for you to get gameplay where you can really just use the space and express yourself by, like, like you do in every other, uh, real life sport, every other real life sort of martial art activity. Careful timing and positioning of your attacks. That's, that's it. I'm gonna stop holding charge, it's not Mega Man. There's like a slight drawback from holding charge all the time. Oh wow, what an angle. But it was my fault. I feel like those gates are a nice telegraph for when the enemies are coming, but they don't. Um, they could, the enemies could come out just a little bit slower. See how I reflected that needle? And making them hit the wall? I did another class just like I practiced. Cool. Just a heads up. It's five o'clock. Okay. Whenever Marcus shows up, you can. So I say all the time: slow movement, careful positioning. Those are the things that really make these action games. I think action games that focus too much on like flashy attacks, too much on like combos and chains that are automatic. Like a lot of games to make their chains work, you track the enemies. Like what we're talking about is enemy design, but it works both ways. It's all part of the same sort of interconnected equation. If you suck onto your enemy's position, if you track onto it too easily, too hard, like it kind of takes away all the work that you have to do spacing. And I'll, by the way, you can see these enemies doing a return fire every time I hit them. Super annoying. What the heck is that? You attack on your timer or else. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that after I see that was see that was a cool spacing, understanding the difference and hitting the enemy around before he does his return fire is actually kind of neat because you're changing 
where, where the incoming attack's gonna be. See right there, I should've just stayed underneath. It was so clean. Yeah, so these enemies I like much better than those stupid orange honeysuckle, I don't even know what to call them, jerks. Actually, I do know what to call them. Hold on, guys. Oh, the game doesn't pause when you go into the menu. Yay, for no reason, just like Dark Souls. Why do people copy weird stuff like that? See, these guys shoot on the same off rhythm, so their random positioning relative to each other makes these cool patterns, and it's just, this is super fun. You're like, oh, cool, depending on which one I hit and how I hit you. Oh, wow. Diagonal projectiles, by the way, super annoying. It's cool trying to get more damage in on these guys. And then knocking them around the stage so that they change their bullet timing. That's super cool. Ah! <laughs> and dodging him? That felt just like freaking Strike Man. Oh, this is an angry version where he fires faster. See that? I used the natural duck of this animation. I don't even know if it changes my hitbox. Look at that, I just ducked it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff you want in your games. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not this. Oh, I need to focus. There we go. Weakening them both is also a cool strategy. That's like the Zelda Link to the Past boss with the uh, armor. And you, you kill him up until the last one. And it um the last one goes berserk. That's a cool thing to have in your game. Because you're like, do you weaken both and, and make it hard in one way? Or do you focus fire one and make it hard in another? That's cool. I like this stuff. I beat that because that was... See, that's why I think challenge number one and two in this uh, Coliseum are really well balanced and much more interesting. I haven't really beaten three. I could level up some more and put the right uh, trinkets on, but I kind of didn't want to. So I'm gonna take. We're gonna take a look at the GIF that Adrian posted up. I'm just gonna hit home on this one. Change my monitor. Yeah. So I guess um, what what are we doing? First, I need to go back to Discord. Is that correct, Adrian? You posted it here. And I'll. Click back there, and I'll do this, and I'll do that, and then I'll drag it over. So Dark Souls, a game notorious for having tracking, and sometimes the enemies need a little tracking. Like, it's all about tuning. You don't want them to look in credits. So 3D is different than 2D. Let's just get that straight. What, I, what Everything you saw in 2D there was very simple because it's just two dimensions, up, down, left, right. Really easy to see when an enemy has a near miss or whatever. But just imagine in 3D, instead of just like walking backwards out of the range, you could just walk in uh, almost in 360 degree direction, or I guess 180 degree direction away-ish from your enemy. And if they didn't have any ability to sort of compensate for that, that extra dimension of space essentially gives you a, an exponential amount more of possibilities to dodge. And if you don't compensate that at all, it'll be too easy to dodge a lot of these attacks, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. Um, so what enemies naturally do in 2D is they corner you, they corral you, they force you to jump over, and jumping is pretty dynamic. But what enemies don't do so well in top-down or 3D games is essentially say, how do I corner you when you can just walk in full 360 direction and you can constantly keep shifting in the direction? It's much harder in a top-down or 3D style game. So what they do to compensate is they have tracking. And this is a GIF Adrian made apparently. And like this guy does an attack and he slashes and then he jumps in midair and like rotates his body and, and then yeah. rotates it even further. Do I have the ability to pause this? No, not on this service. Rotates his body in midair and then rotates again. Then you see him rotate even again, even as Adrian rolls away right at the end. He's like, his head is tracking Adrian like 100%. His attacks are lagging a little bit behind tracking wise, but that's pretty intense. Like when a person leaps in the air, you expect their ability to, to follow you to be much, much, much reduced. Doesn't look like it's the case as much with this. Um, so, you know, I don't really see a lot of people doing the kind of dodging that you see that I just showed in Hollow Knight, like super precise, uh, super accurate hitboxes for two reasons in the Soul series. Their hitboxes are terribly inaccurate and <laughs> the tracking is too strong, right? So that's why you can't get it. All the, and also you don't have adequate ways of actually dodging opponents that are constantly coming at you. Hollow Knight, you have an invincible dash, a double jump, jumping in general, and it's super versatile for dodging incoming enemy attacks. In Dark Souls, you have roll and that's about it. So they have iframes. Everyone who doesn't think Dark Souls has iframes, these games have iframes. It's, it can, if a few iframes there's nothing wrong with, it helps you um, 
deliver the desired effect for the animation that you're pairing it with. But in general, if you have a lot of iframes, it's just like a get out of jail free card, roll, 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 however you want. Um, doesn't necessarily matter how where you roll or when you started or what angle you pick because you got iframes. Um, so yeah, there's not a lot you can do in the Souls game to even get that level of precision, right? Um, what you need to do is like just like we saw in Hollow Knight, have slower attacks. People say that the attacks in Dark Souls are slow and deliberate. They're really not. It's just all relative anyway. Like they're slower than freaking Devil May Cry, but not necessarily slower than other action games that are trying to build their base around clear individual actions instead of just like a flurry of combo attacks. So like, and then Souls has fast weapons and then super slow weapons. So like, it's it's got a range that isn't isn't sort of out of the ordinary, I would say, based on my gameplay experience. Maybe based on other people, they'd find it more surprising. So, the attacks need to be slower. You need to have an actual way to dodge them. Uh, you can look at games like For Honor, which I own, but I don't have my PS4 again. Um, and then they, their attacks have definite like ranges. Like This is a horizontal swipe meant to hit, hit sidesteppers, a vertical slash meant to hit attack people directly in front of you. Like All these things are important for giving you the ability to uh, just use basic positioning in order to evade, right? You can have a role in that game as well, but it's definitely more skillful, right? More precise, to be more precise with your fine-tuned control instead of your rolling, which is I consider to be a very coarse control. Roll if you have to, do what you must, but just understand design-wise what's happening in these battles. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I, sh I want to show Splatoon off, so... Uh, back over here the, the chums and the cohawks they have tracking yeah uh, they have a <laughs> they, they, they have some tracking so yeah it's, it's necessary top down zelda in the article i wrote a long time ago analyzing the difference fundamental differences between 2d and 3d we saw a long time ago that top down zelda has um homing homing is tracking for projectiles but then if you have continuous homing that's like super tracking for projectiles which we saw in n plus when that missile was following me around so obviously there's degrees and there's ways you can apply it to different things, but uh, we'll take a look at this. So yeah, okay, so in, in the very basic sense, all the enemies in this game have tracking. They home in on you. They target you and they follow you around. That's tracking. Uh, but when we're talking about melee attacks, it's different, right? <laughs> and when we're talking about none of these enemies in themselves have hitboxes that actively hurt you. It's anything that's green ink. So the scrapper and the shot in front of you, this little clunker junker thingy, the green ink is being at the back, but if you touch the front, I don't think you take damage if it's not moving. If it runs into you, you take a little bit of damage. Like you got hit by a, like a moving vehicle. If you touch the back of this little eel, oop, I don't wanna post that. If you run to the back of this eel, I don't think you take damage. No, I don't wanna delete that. <laughs> uh, so, otherwise, your your core enemies in this game have melee attacks. They attack with spoons and frying pans and frying pans. That's right, I kill you. So let's see if I can get a picture. <laughs> that was me jumping out of a mall's mouth. It's crazy. I think I had to go in the kid form right there and then go where the front of his lip is and barely get out before he snaps his jaws. Next. What's a good example? Right here. This guy sees me. He's not happy. He swings. Horizontal, top to bottomish strike because he's trying to hit me and I was on the bottomish part. Uh, I jump. And look, he misses, right? It seems like the hitbox for that frying pan is exactly what it looks like. And because it's exactly what he looks like, and this enemy moves slowly anyway, I was able to just barely, in midair, dodge his attack, and take care of my business by throwing this bomb into the fly fish beyond it. This enemy's tracking me, so I slow it down with a shot, and then these missiles coming down, just barely able to walk out away from the danger zone, and this is, those missiles are exploding in a 3D hitbox, so I'm actually trying to position myself both you know, horizontally and being careful by jumping sometimes to avoid taking more damage. I jump over the green puddle, got bumped, I took a little damage, okay. Not the end of the world, kill him. More examples, where? Cool. 
cool. This is where I go and take out Stinger. So this is crazy sauce. These guys are jerks, and <laughs> they shoot lasers at you, as we've already gone over, but this weapon's amazing. So I drop down low and shoot at its stomach, and I realize I, I shot at the middle part, and he has two links left. Attack here. My blast goes forward. I swim through my blast. Hit that one, hit that one, hit that one. I realize that I'm cornered, and that enemy behind me is about to strike, so I move away. This little fish tries to hit me, so I move backwards underneath it. This guy tries to hit me, so I swoop around. And I, see how when they're tracking you, they're attacking the spot where you were and not the spot where you continually are? Super important for being able to do those jukes. And if you think those jukes are easy, believe me, people don't play like this. This is super high level movement uh, in Grisco play. Little decisions every. Every drop of ink and every micro movement is keeping me alive because the enemies are allowing space to be the negotiating factor instead of just pure timing. If it was just pure timing, they'd be like, fly back me and then do a quick strike and be like, oh man, I had to, you know, dodge ahead of time to get around it. But no, seeing things on reaction, seeing their spatial position beforehand, three fatties, two, two little guys on the left, right, three small fry directly in front of me, I knew exactly what to do. I attacked ahead of me, swim forward, jumped over the ink. Dodge them, dodge them, dodge them, dodge them. And then they're actually also getting hung up on each other, which is a cool bit of interplay that I love. Like, I put that in the RPG where enemies get in their own way as a semi sort of um, pushback against their overwhelming odds and numbers. It's a little bit of crowd control that you can exert on them by using your positioning to influence their positioning. Again, this is the kind of stuff and the design that makes every inch matters. But the more you have things trying to collapse that difference and that, and that spatial difference, then it becomes less and less about your space and the interesting things you can do and the way you can define yourself becomes less and less precise, less and defined, with less and less range for you to be, be able to um, differentiate yourself in every other player. That might be what you're looking for for a challenge, but otherwise, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for everything to be more like Santa Man. <laughs> I have another example for you, but it's a YouTube video. It's what? It's a YouTube video. It's one of mine. Okay. Link it. Do, do, do. I'll, I'll do one, a few more of these. I'm trying to find it. So this so is... It does, yeah? It should take you to 22 minutes in. Okay, cool. I'll click on that in a second. Here's another example. Oops, I didn't see those fish there. They have frying pans and I'm surrounded. I jump in midair. And it avoids that guy's hit. You can see his mouth like, ah, he missed! Like that. Jumped over him, landed behind him, and hit his friend. That tiny optimization was because they were downhill. Normally you can't jump over those guys, but they were downhill, and I jumped over uphill and even used the wall a little bit maybe to get around them. And that's like the difference. Killed you. See that? Super close. <laughs> I'm shooting this target with a weak gun, so it's taking forever. A guy comes up in front of me, I'm like, oh no, it's a vertical um, frying pan strike. So their strikes are different depending on where they think you are. If you're in the air, they're going to kind of strike vertically. But it's actually a lot more um, nuanced than I thought it was. Like, you know how in Smash you have angle tilts and angle smashes? That's pretty much what they do with their strike. Based on where you are and where they, their hand is, and they're all right-handed. That's pretty cool, too. You need to know to juke to their left in order to gain advantage. So guess what I do here? Back up. He misses because he did a vertical strike. If he did a horizontal, he may have been able to get me as I swoop right here. I bounce off the, the fat stomach of this one directly in front of me. And because you can't swim through enemies, I use that as sort of a rebound. So it's kind of like, boom. Jumped. Shot myself clean. Look, that guy attacks me behind. Misses. This guy attacks. Misses. Because I finally painted my path and used the uh, swim speed to get away from them. And then I got out of that one too, miraculously. So this is what I'm talking about. If you want, I don't know of a game that has like a lot of lunge that I even, I mean, like, like this is the kind of stuff I like. It's not about being sort of like less flashy and it's not about being, um, having less moves. Like put all the moves you want, put all the pizzazz and flair and flash that you want, but do so in a way that always keeps space and timing important do so in a way that where your later moves don't completely overshadow your previous moves and that also includes movement moves you don't want to have a movement in your game that overshadows your basic movement so walking if you have it in your game needs to be important and effective for something dashing needs to be effective and important for something and like in general i feel like the movement in melee got like away from them 
and a lot of things became so important they replaced a lot of your basic stuff so I, like that's definitely not the direction I'd go which is why I really like Smash 4 uh, and I really like what they're doing so it's just like a general principle that just says hey like inches matter if you're gonna make a space with this much this many inches the more you make the smallest detail matter that's another way of thinking that's the deep the deeper your game goes and by deep I mean you know making sure everything is meaningful and everything has its own sort of purpose yeah papas so let's let's do this again Adrian link me up to this video make sure to lower the volume it's default low so Oh, you slowed it down afterwards? Okay, so a guy attacks, yeah. gets around the pillar, and then changes from behind the pillar to hit you? Yeah, Did it hit so you? Look at, yeah, it does hit me. Look <laughs> at the point at when I dodge. He's in the middle of the jump. He's got it overhead, so I dodge. He curves mid-air. The sword doesn't even hit me, but it still counts as a hit. So you're rolling ahead of time because the incoming attack is so either large or threatening or whatever. Then you're like, yeah. perfect time to react. He changes his curve. You look like you're in your roll, but it still hits you? Yeah, I think, I have no clue how the iframes in this one works. It's like the second your shoulder hits the ground, your iframes are over. <laughs> but it's like, it didn't even hit me. <laughs> and it also and went through a pillar. Being bad. Yeah, the, and then the camera's being bad while it's at it. Yeah, that's, it's, that's like a bad habit you gotta catch yourself in as a, um, whenever you're tuning anything. If you don't know which things you're tuning and which things are important and what goal you're moving for, you're often going to tune one thing and then tune another thing to catch up and tune one thing and tune another thing to catch up. So you can imagine somebody was like, well, people are rolling around all these enemies. Or like, increase the tracking. And they're like, oh, people are getting hit too much. Well, let them have a build that has tons of iframes. You're like, that's probably not what you want to do. And by probably, I mean you shouldn't want to do that. And I don't like Dark Souls or Demon Souls, so too bad. Um, that's essentially what I mean. But... Yeah, the base, the basic style of combat here, the basic approach, clean it up. You got yourself something cool. Like, it, it really doesn't take that much to make something really engaging and deep and interesting space-wise. If you just played even a shoot 'em up, up down left right with bullets coming in, you got yourself a game. Like, I'll play that. I just played a game called Just Shapes and Beats at a party yesterday, and um, it's basically a four-player shoot 'em up with tons of bullets and everything kind of exists on a rhythm on the game because it's like to a beat to the music. So you're kind of playing a four player shoot 'em up, which apparently I've never played a four player top down shoot 'em up before, I don't think. And you have no bullets, you don't shoot anything. All you do is move and, and survive, which is kind of neat, pretty simple, but it's effective, right? Just from those two elements, respecting your space. You have a dash in that game, that dash is invincible and you can kind of spam it. So because your dash is highly effective, um, the hazards go hog wild in that game. I mean, the, almost the entire screen is just filled up with crisscrossing lasers, bullets, and things bouncing around. I and mean, you just got to deal with it because you got basic movement. It's really effective. And then beyond that, you got to dodge to deal with it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about uh, Lungy. I wish I had more examples to show. I wish I had some Horizon to show. Um, and just another general thing that's attached to that. If your enemies close in on you too fast it also kills your ability to create rich meaningful varied and expressive sp spatial based interplay which is essentially gameplay here if you can't out if you can't place yourself in the proper position and your enemies are just on you that hard that just means trying to utilize the entire arena just becomes a, a an unviable strategy if you're like, oh, I should probably take high ground, and the enemy just like punches you and punches you and gets on you and just doesn't stop, you have to roll, 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 and you can't get the high ground, then what's the point of even having the ability for high ground to matter, right? And if enemies are constantly just shooting you from afar and you dodge them, but then they shoot area of effect uh, blasts that have a lingering effect, and you're like, well, I dodged that. But then like you did an explosion and hit me, and now I'm still in the explosion. This Horizon has that as well. Enemies are lobbing huge projectors at you, and you're like, cool, let me get out of the way. Explosion, you're like, do I need to roll everything? And they're super accurate. <laughs> That's another thing that people do a lot of times with um, spatial games. Like, in Zelda, especially in the original Zelda, the Zora shoot blasts at you, and they're slow. So even though they home in on your position, they don't correct after they're shot, and they're slow, so you can deal with it as you move around and play. And a lot of these games, to try to 
pressure the player too much without understanding how to do it by letting all the systems layer together and create good emergent gameplay is they just make any individual blast too deadly. Like, oh, make it just shoot at you faster and then make it explode so it's even harder to dodge and then make it to where they home on your precise eyeball. Like, I can't believe some of these games. You, like, peek over the edge and all of a sudden incoming projectile perfectly homed at your eyeball. And you're like, are you kidding me? Like, I could barely even see over the lids. And you just, like, know where I am and try to take me out. Like, come on. But that's all right. It's all about tuning. And... Tuning is a high-level thing because it involves all your systems working together in actual practical examples in order to know which way to tune this and that. Um, and, you know, I, and I wish I could also show you Sakura Samurai. I'm going to try to find a video of it uh, real quick. But that's a DS, 3DS downloadable game. And I thought it was a really terrible game for a lot of interesting reasons <laughs> uh, let me try to find a gameplay trailer so like in this game good old giant bomb I gotta wrap this up but I can't pass up the chance to talk about Sakura Samurai okay so in this game you're a little samurai dude and you move around space like oh look you, you fine-tune movement you can kinda like walk around that's cool um, but then wow there's a lot of enemies what are you gonna do about it well apparently this game solved this problem by saying no matter how many enemies are around you they take turns just like true samurai fashion, which is pretty cool. Like the samurai code of 1v1ing people. I might be making that code up, but every anime seems to do it. <laughs> so whatever. Uh, so this guy, okay, he initiated his thing. And he's going to home in on your position. But then after he gets about halfway through his lunch, he can't correct. So you use a left dodge and a right dodge. And then he goes back. This guy's doing the same thing, right? Like, oh, he's trying to find out. Oh, but this guy wants to attack. And the game very kindly positions the camera for you, tells you who's about to attack, and basically separates every encounter into a small mini game. Precision points, as you see there, are what happen when you dodge very precisely before you get hit, instead of just spamming dodge ahead of time. So it encourages you to hold your ground. When you hold your ground, their little hesitates and feigns like this. Look at this. Oh, he's gonna run slash me. What? Oh, now he's gonna run slash me. Like, that's a, it's a little feign he throws in, and every, there's mix-ups and all kinds of things, but you cut him and he dies. Oh, now this one's gonna go, then that one's gonna go, this one's gonna go, and then that one's gonna go. But, you know, their sets of attacks aren't too fast, but it's cool how they tell you, like, this is the order, and then you have to do the order. So that's still very cool. Game's boring. <laughs> this is just so, like, basic reflexes, and it looks like there's almost no crowd control dynamics, and there's, like, Everything's just one at a time, no matter how complex the battle looks. It is boring. I didn't like this game, but it's one of my favorite games. <laughs> so what happened? Well, what happened was, one thing that you're not seeing in the videos, if you ever try to attack any of the enemies, like, let's screw this, I'm going to take this guy out on the left, they auto-block every single one of your attacks 100%, and your sword takes chip damage with its sharpness, so every time you hit something that's not human flesh, <laughs> Um, you lose power, so they might turn a two-shot enemy into a three-shot enemy, right? So, and since every turn matters and everything's sort of like paced out, you kind of don't want that to happen. So, like this game's super basic looking, like super not flashy, super not impressive, super like, why would this game be fun? But it is because of a magical reason that I probably won't be able to show you in this video, but. The basic idea is every single thing is already pretty discreet. Like all these movements seem pretty discreet. The enemy walks up to you, you have like an up, down, or you forward, back, left, right mix ups, and you got, you do it in the right timing, and you get meter, and you're like, everything's discreet and almost mini game like. The cool thing about it is they could carve those mini games out of the normal, natural gameplay. So if everything wasn't happening one by one, the enemy's sword hitboxes are accurate. Your dodge hitboxes are accurate because I don't think there's any iframes in this game. Your character just moves really fast. And since everything's well telegraphed and at a decent speed, you don't need iframes. Um, and if it wasn't for the everything happening one by one, this would just be a really well-controlled, accurate action game. So what you can do in this game is instead of letting everything happen one by one and falling asleep and getting bored and getting angry and regretting your purchase, you can hit the X button. I don't need, we don't need any of this. Okay. 
Where is it? This is the town, so these aren't... Oh, they have like a mini game you can do. I even forgot about that. It's, this mini game's cool because it uses the 3DS as stereoscopic, so you're supposed to judge when to slice the watermelon just based on eyeballs, right? Who, who doesn't love eyeballs? Okay, so this is another enemy. And instead of letting everything happen one by one and just wait and wait and wait because you can't attack, like Eager Raptor's whole thing about waiting, that's supposed to apply to this game, not Zelda. <laughs> These guys will absolutely 100% block you like throughout the entire game unless you play to this mini game. But the cool part is if you hit the X button, instead of taking turns, they their, their turn um, taking is basically accelerated to the point where everything's kind of happening in real time. And because they start to move at you in real time and they start to attack you simultaneously, um, your ability to move around them becomes analog as well. So instead of just going left dodge, right dodge, back dodge, forward dodge, you have um, just full sort of 360 movement. And basically going from course control to fine control is basically taking the game from a mini game that's fairly shallow, shallow to a really precise, accurate uh, sword fighting game where the entirety of your hitbox matters. Where you draw from, left or right, matters. Where you end from, matters. Because you don't want to like get an opportunity, cut one enemy, and then have it carry through and the other one auto-blocks it because that's going to weaken your sword. So where you angle matters, where you move matters, how many enemies are attacking you matters, how you get around them without using the course dodge, or even if you use it, matters. And then because more things are happening at once, it, sh it just goes from like boring minigame to one of, my, one of my favorite sort of melee action games like combat styles of all time, which is crazy. It's not a lot of games that do this, but, and this game's ugly, this game's ugly. <laughs> yeah, I know, believe me. But if you truly embrace that system, I can't recommend it more for someone's looking for an interesting way to have super clear, super clean, super deep combat that is um, made of a lot of simple actions. It's very elegant. So. That's my short review of Soccer Samurai. It's a game that doesn't have any lunging. As you can see, all the attacks are super slow, and yet it's super action-packed once you take it to that level. And you have to take it to that level to get... Um, they have like a level rush mode of three varying difficulties, and Nintendo a long time ago posted their... What is it? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, high score for their playtesters in-house and what scores they got. And because this game's like a the game nobody cares about, they don't ha really have leaderboards, so there was no, there was no like official contest for it. But I tried to beat the record anyway, and I actually did Sakura Samurai. And uh, let me see if I still have that screenshot. Probably not. Photos. Search. Samurai. I have Samurai Gun, I have Samurai Jack, or Soccer Samurai. I have Soccer Eye, but not Soccer Samurai. <laughs> oh well, but yeah, I, it pushed me to the limit. I had to practice it for a week, over a week, multiple days of like analyzing my, my approach, redoing my, my strategy, refining my technique, and it surprised me how much, how much effort I had to put in this game just to sort of mastered in that way so that's why I believe in these simple principles it's why I look for these things in other games and it's why you should probably pay attention to them too if you're designing games yourself or looking for the reason why X game does X and Y game does Y so until next time later guys later